about five years ago, I created a Raspberry Pi gaming device that was kind of like a console and TV two in one that you could plug controllers into and play retro games. This was fun and it worked fine, but it was kind of weird because it was pretty bulky and you had to have a separate controller, so it wasn't the best. A bit after that, I made another version. This version was more like a Game Boy with a controller built in. It used the Raspberry Pi Zero, which is a smaller version of the Raspberry Pi, so it was a lot more compact. This version was great, but you couldn't play as many games because the Raspberry Pi Zero was a lot less powerful. Recently, the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 came out, which is the next generation of the Raspberry Pi Zero. The Zeros are my favorite Raspberry Pis because they are small but they can still do a lot. For example, this board can play the same games as the Pi 3B Plus I used in my first gaming device, while being as small as the Pi Zero I used in my second one. With that in mind, I decided to create this, the ultimate Raspberry Pi mobile gaming console. First things first, I need a screen. I saw this little HDMI screen on Amazon and thought it looked perfect. This was definitely a good choice. After I connected an HDMI cable and 5 volts, this screen just worked perfectly, which is more than I can say for some other small screens. However, I don't want a big bulky HDMI cable on my gaming console, so I got this little HDMI ribbon cable. Because the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 doesn't have an audio jack, I had to get this little USB audio adapter. The Raspberry Pi Zero 2 also only has one micro USB port, so I had to get this micro USB hub. For the controller, I decided to get this Razer Kishi. This is a pretty interesting controller. If you pull these two tabs on the back, it can extend out and latch around your phone, but I won't be doing that. Because the whole system runs on 5 volts and the battery voltage is between 3.2 and 3.4 volts, I need something to boost the voltage up, so I'm using this PCB from a mobile charger. This will also turn off the console if the battery voltage gets too low. To charge the battery, I'll use these little charging module boards. They just have a USB-C port and they charge a battery safely at a constant current. I will also use one of these battery level indicators so I can check how charged the battery is. On this board, one red light means it's powered and one to four green lights show the charge. Here's the full system. There's the battery charging board to charge the battery. The battery is putting out 1.63 amps at 3.6 volts and because it's a 10 amp hour battery it should easily last 5 hours. The battery is connected to the mobile charging board which boosts the voltage up to 5 volts to power the Pi, the screen, the hub, the controller, and the audio adapter. I also removed the case on the hub and the audio adapter to save space. Here's all the electronics in their final position. There we have the battery charging board, which connects over to the battery terminals. Right now I don't have the battery soldered on for testing, but it would go right there. The positive terminal of the battery is connected through a switch and the negative is directly connected to the mobile charger board. The output of that board is then directly connected to the Pi's GPIO pins. After that, I took the USB cable and made it do a quick U-turn and then wired it over to the hub. It also is connected to the screen right there. On the hub, one of the ports is connected up to the audio adapter. The other port is connected over to the controller. I was going to have a USB port on the bottom of the device, but I ripped one of the data line pads off and I was desoldering the plug, so I guess I won't. This hub also has an Ethernet port, but I won't be using it, so I just put some tape over it. Across the top is that HDMI ribbon cable that connects the Pi over to the screen. The two halves of the controller are also connected by a ribbon cable. Just like that. Now put the battery on top and it's done. 
didn't turn out as thick as I thought it would be, so that's good. The first step in making the case was trimming the controllers. Next I got some plastic and cut out the rough shape. I then notched it so it will fit together better and be more sturdy. I made small adjustments until they fit pretty good, and then I made cutouts in the side pieces to fit the halves of the controller. The notches seemed to make it strong enough that I could probably get away with using hot glue instead of epoxy, which is great because I can take it apart if I have to. After gluing in the electronics, I installed a piece of foam so everything is cushioned and stays in place. I then added another piece of foam and wrapped the battery in tape to further protect it. Now just glue on the back cover and it's done. For a finishing touch, I ground down the edges and then went over them with my soldering iron to smooth them out. It doesn't look perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. There's the battery level indicator, showing I have 75% battery. There's the power switch and a little button to wake up the mobile charging board, because sometimes it doesn't turn on. There's the USB-C for charging and the audio jack. Here it is compared to some other handheld consoles. It's a decent amount larger than the Switch, but it makes up for it because the screen's also larger. Because the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 is pretty powerful, you can play a lot of games like Nintendo 64, PlayStation Portable, and PlayStation 1 games. This can also act as a Steam Deck to connect to your computer to play Steam games. I would show you that, but I can't because I have to confirm an update by pressing Y, and I can't connect a keyboard because I ripped that solder pad off earlier, as I mentioned. However, I already tested it, and the input delay is way too slow. I don't know if it's because my Wi-Fi is bad or something else, but I guess I won't be doing that. Anyways, thanks for watching!